Hey guys, Shanky here and welcome back to another factory design tutorial. Today I'm going to show you a 100% efficient steel factory. The factory in question takes an input of 270 iron ores and coal ores per minute, the output being 270 steel ingots per minute. Those ingots are then converted into steel beams at 45 per minute and steel pipes at 60 per minute. This is a perfect beginner's factory, especially if you just unlock steel. Um, you're going to be needing the Mark II miners and the Mark III conveyor belts. You're also going to have to overclock the miners to hit the 270 ore per minute. Okay, so I have two different designs here. They're both basically the same thing, but the only difference is one uses a smart splitter and the other doesn't. So the one on the left uses the smart splitter and the one on the right doesn't. So just follow along for the construction for now and then later on I'll tell you when to switch. So to start the construction you're going to need a 3x4 space. If you go for the design that doesn't have a smart splitter then that's going to become 5x4. Okay, we're going to go layer by layer. So we're going to go with a single wall conveyor and with two normal walls on either side. On this side, you're going to keep double wall conveyors. And then on this side, just normal walls. And finally, again, double wall conveyors all the way. So the single wall conveyor is going to be the inlet for the coal. Now you're going to take a splitter and keeping it in line with the single wall conveyor and with the inlet facing the conveyor, you're going to place it on the junction between the first two platforms. And then along with that, you're going to place another splitter with the inlet facing the splitter this time. Then place another splitter on the opposite side, just like you did with the second one. And the fourth splitter you're going to place on the far end right into the wall with the inlet facing the first splitter. Now you're going to use a Mark III conveyor to connect with the first splitter and then you're going to use Mark II conveyors to connect with all the other splitters. And then you're going to use Mark I conveyors to connect it up with the wall conveyors. So what's happening here is that 270 ore per minute is split three ways to three different splitters. So you're going to get 270 divided by three, which is 90. And then on each splitter, it's going to be divided two more times. So 90 by two, that's 45 for each. Now just cover that up with platforms. I'm going to be using glass platform. You can use the eight by one foundation. It's your choice. Okay, so now it's time to place down the foundries. So to do that, just place the double walls right above the other one. And then we're going to place the foundries like so. Keep, in, keep a single um, conveyor space in between them. And then just repeat that on the opposite side. Now just keep two sets of windows to cover up that floor. All right, now it's time to connect the conveyors from the ground floor to the foundries. And don't forget to connect the conveyors directly to the foundries. and place down mergers to combine all of the ingots into one single line. So we've done the load balancing for the coal and we've set up all the foundries. Now we need to do the load balancing for the iron. So I'm just going to show you what I had in mind about how the ores are going to come into the system. So imagine that is the coal line and now we need the iron line. So for the iron line, we can keep a stack of a conveyor pole and the iron line would go above that, right? And from here, we use a conveyor lift to bring it all the way up to the top floor above the boundary floor. So to do that, let's first cover up the boundaries. And 
and then we're going to repeat the exact same design of the bottom floor on the top floor so keep a single conveyor wall like that with the two normal walls and then this side complete double conveyor walls normal walls here and repeat double conveyor walls on the other side so now we bring up the iron line with the lift all the way up and we connect it with the single conveyor wall i keep forgetting what that thing is called so unlike in the first floor where we kept the splitter right in between the two junctions of the middle first and second foundation we're going to keep a dead center of the second foundation and then just connect that up with the mark three and then from that splitter we're going to make three other splitters into the walls with the inlet facing the first splitter The third pair we kept right into the wall on the ground floor, so this time we're going to keep it on the second to last conveyor socket. Now just connect everything up with mark two conveyors, because we're splitting the 270 into 90. 270 by 3, that's why. Yeah, you get it. Now use the mark one uh, conveyors to connect it to the sockets. Now that the load balancing is over, we just need to connect all of that to the foundries. And while I'm here, I might as well set up all the foundries to make steel. And yes, I do have another alternate recipe for the steel. It actually produces a, about 150% uh, more steel ingots. It's actually really good. It converts um, ingots and ores. So basically, you have iron ingots and you have coal ores. You combine both of them and you get more steel. It's pretty good. On the side where you have the output of all the foundries, place a single wall conveyor with one normal walls on either side. And then on this side, place three double wall conveyors. Now this side you can keep um, normal walls or windows, that's your choice. Follow up with three more wall con uh, double wall conveyors. Use a conveyor lift to connect to the wall conveyor. Now place a splitter on the second conveyor wall in line with its second socket. Connect it up. Now place a splitter on this side, connect it up with the Mark II conveyor and then use Mark I conveyors to connect it with the sockets. Now we're going to place a merger in front of the first splitter and then connect it with both of the outputs of the first splitter. Now place a splitter in line with the first splitter like so. And then connect it with the output from the merger. Alright guys, it's time to part ways with some of you. Those who want the design with a smart splitter can stay and keep watching. Those who don't want it can skip ahead to the timestamp shown above. For those of you who want the design with the smart splitters, build three double conveyor walls right above the previous one. Then do that on the other side as well. Place two single wall conveyors on the side that doesn't have the inlet of the ingot load balancing like this. And then place regular walls on the side with the inlet. Leave one conveyor socket and build a constructor in line with the conveyor socket and build two more right next to it. Repeat this on the other side. Now use lifts and conveyors to connect the outputs of the load balancer with the constructor.
place mergers with the outlet towards the side with the two single wall conveyors. Now connect them all up. Also, when you're assigning the constructors their work, make sure to assign their work correctly according to the load balancing from the previous floor. Place the smart splitter at the end of this chain of mergers. And then change the left and right outlet to output beams and pipes. Then connect it with the conveyor sockets. Now place a set of windows and close it off. You won't be able to place the foundation inside, so go out one, place the foundation on top of that, and then continue on from there to cover up the ceiling. This factory, like I had said in the beginning, produces 45 steel beams per minute and 60 steel pipes per minute. And with that, you're practically done with the design. Now just send the items to your designated storage space, or you can build one right on top of this by just using a lift to send it up. This is for those of you who don't want a smart splitter in your design. Extend the platform by one column on either side. Then place down three double wall conveyors on either side in line with the three double wall conveyors on the previous floor. Starting from the second conveyor socket of the first double wall conveyor, place down three constructors side by side and then repeat that on the opposite side. Link the wall socket and the constructor. Then attach a lift and extend it in line with the wall sockets of the previous floor. Connect them all up. This is where the output will come through. You can place this double conveyor wall on either side of the building, that's your preference. Place mergers in line with the wall socket and with each constructor. We're going to use two different lines of mergers, one for each item. Now connect everything up. Make sure you don't accidentally connect the two lines of mergers together because that would actually suck. Now place the windows and close everything up. There will be a clearance issue here for placing a foundation. So place the foundation outside, place a foundation on top of that, and then from the top foundation, place a foundation inside. And then from there, just cover everything up. And with that, you're practically done with the design. Now just send the items to your designated storage space or you can build one right on top of this by just using a lift to send it up. As you can see, the power usage of the factory is 100% efficient as shown by the straight line. There are these weird hiccups that happen now and then, but I don't know what's causing them. I cross-checked the calculations and the buildings and it turns out two foundries are running at 94% capacity, which again doesn't make any sense because the calculation is correct. I don't know, maybe one of you could explain that to me. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you have any questions, comment down below. If you have any design ideas or if you would like me to do a particular design, you're welcome to share that as well. Thanks again and I'll see you guys next time.